Hey, welcome to RGB color and hexadecimal color explained. Since you'll be working with hexadecimal colors a lot of times in CSS, you should kind of have an idea of how they work. I know they can be a little confusing. You'll see a bunch of letters and numbers and pound signs and, and, and characters like that. So I just want to try and explain it a little bit and we'll see how this goes. First of all, I just want to make sure that you understand RGB color. That's the color that you see on computer screens. And it's composed of three channels, red, green, and blue, just like old TV sets and old computer monitors. And they basically have a range of 0 through 255. And they kind of go from dark to light. 0 is dark, and 255 is light. And you can think of it as going from, from black to white. So that's the range that they have for each channel. Each color has three channels of red, green, and blue, and each one can have a range of 0 through 255, and that'll basically determine what color it is. Now, one thing just to keep in mind is that these are additive colors. RGB colors are additive. When they all kind of combine together, they form white. Whereas with subtractive colors, the colors you might be used to with inks, or even if you paint, anything like that, or crayons, anything like that, when you subtract them, you get white of the paper, but with additive colors, you add them to get white, which is a little unusual because the, the color mixing isn't as predictive as what you would think. For example, R and G makes yellow, which th that wouldn't happen if you're working with paint. So I just want you to be aware of that, that they are additive colors. Now here's kind of an example of the channels. Now when the channels are up all the way, when each each channel is up for the, that particular color and the others are down, it'll basically show you that true color. So here's an example of the red, green, and blue when each channel is up all the way to 255. Now just to look at them individually, here's the red channel and you can see it's up to 255. The green and blue are down to zero and we refer to that color as RGB 25500 in that order and they always go in that order of RGB. Same thing with green. Here's green, same thing. The green channel is 255, so when you'd read that, it would be 0, 255, 0. And then same thing for the blue channel, that's the last channel in our RGB sequence. So when that's up to 255, you'll see the kind of the true RGB blue, which is 0, 0, 255. Also, when the colors are down to 0, this is a Photoshop slider here, when the colors are down to 0, you'll see, you'll see black. That means all the, all the lights. You could look at RGB almost as lights. You could say the lights are all off. So when those lights are off, everything's down to black, and RGB black would be 0, 0, 0. Now, when it's the other way, it would be light. All the, when all the lights are on at the same time, if you picture like a red, green, and blue spotlight pointing all in one direction, or all at one um, target, they would basically make white when they combine. So that would be 255, 255, 255 for the RGB equivalent of those colors. And that's their range, 0 to 255 for a total of 256. And then also, just to be aware that anywhere in between a black when they're all off and white when they're all on would kind of make a gray. And when the when the sliders are all at the same point, they'll always make a gray. So higher end on the scale towards the 255, there'll be a lighter gray. And down lower on the scale, they'll make a darker gray. Now keep in mind also that, that these combinations can make millions of color combinations. There's three channels of 255, and basically you could take 255 and cube that and get like 16.7 million colors that can combine from these channels to create colors on your computer screen. So this is a pink, for example. So that color happens to be 209, 96, 171. It's kind of a pink color. Here's an orange color, which is at 232, 125, 35. And you can see, it. since it's orange, there's a, there's a lot of red in it. There's also green in it that, that kind of makes more of a yellowish color. That's kind of how they have orange. And then there's only a little bit of blue light that's in it. So that makes an orange color, 232, 125, 35. Now, when we work on the web, we use a system called hexadecimal. It's a base 16 number system, and it displays the same colors. Uh, it's still RGB colors. So here's an RGB color of 232, 125, 35, the one we just looked at. Now, in hex, it's E8, 7D, 23. The only difference is that it uses different letters and numbers, and there's only two digits for each color instead of three. Whereas in RGB, there could be three digits for each color. In hex, there's only two, and there will only be two. It won't go higher than that. Um, it doesn't necessarily make things easier to translate, but I just want you to understand how hex works a little bit so you can understand that it's really just RGB color. It's just a different way of describing it. It's kind of like taking the you know state names like New Jersey and Pennsylvania and abbreviating them to you know NJ and PA. They mean the same thing. It's just you, you'll see them you'll see them in a different way. 
normally we have a base 10 number system. That's what you're familiar with. We have digits 0 through 9, and all our numbers in our system are composed of those integers, 0 through 9. So any number we have is only going to have those numbers, those 10 numbers with 0 included. Now in the base 16 system, there's 16 numbers including 0. Now when they get to 10, they want to keep them to be single digits, and there's no single digits after 9, so they use letters. So they use A, B, C, D, E, and F, and they basically translate to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And that's as high as it goes. So instead of 255, let's say an RGB channel is 255, you know, we would normally read that number in hundreds. You know, there's 200, there's five tens, and there's five ones. That's how we get 255. That's our base 10 number system. When the hexadecimal system, they basically use a system where there's a 16s place and a ones place. So there's the, the first one is 16s, the second one is ones. And that actually translates because F is equivalent to 15. So there's 15 16s and there's 15 ones, and that's how we get 255. So here I'll kind of go through it. There's 15 16s, which if you do 15 times 16, it'll come out to 240. Now you can't do any more than that. Since the number system only goes up to 15 as far as, as, far as digits, you can't have more than that anyway. So that's the highest it'll go. So there's 15 16s, and then after that, you could only have the highest number 15 ones, and that makes the highest number in the RGB scale. So you get 240 plus 15, and that comes out to 255. So there's the 16s place, and there's the ones place. There's the 15 equals F, 15 equals F. That's how we get this color to basically be FF. And it's not a color, it's really one of the channels is FF. So the color itself would be 255, 255, 255, because we have three channels. So this would actually be white. Now, in hex, it would show up as FF, FF, FF. Each pair of letters is equivalent to 255. And we put a pound sign in front of it to indicate that it's a hexadecimal color. Now, let's just try one just to, just to see if you could figure it out. So if we had an RGB channel that was 23, now that would be pretty low. That would be a darker color. Now, 23, you would figure out how many 16s go into there. And obviously, if, if you know a little bit about math, you know only one 16 could go in there because two 16s would be 32. It would be over. So one 16 will fit in there. And then whatever's left over, 23 minus 16, there would be seven ones left over. That would basically be your hex number. Your hex number would be 17. There's one 16, and then there's seven ones. And that comes out to 23 in terms of a number, but you'll it'll be translated as 17 in hex. Here's another one. Here's a, a larger one, which would be down towards the other end of the scale, or, or a little more past the middle, 153. Now, if we try to fit 16s in here, now you might say, well, I, I don't know how many 16s would go in there. Well, you could start with 10. You could say 10 times 16, that's 160. Does that fit in there? No. Well, let's go down one. Can 9 fit in there? 144. Yes, it can. So we know that the first digit would be 9 16s, and then we could just subtract the difference. The difference would be 9, because it would take 9 ones to get up to 153. So that number would basically be 99. 9 16s, which is 144, and then 9 ones, which will take it up to 153. So that's the equivalent of the RGB 153 color is 99 in hex. So 153, 153, 153, if you're looking at the whole color, not just one channel, that would be 999999 with the pound sign in front of it. We would see that that would be a gray color. Now we can abbreviate this whenever we have the same pairs, whenever we have pairs of colors that, that are the same, like 999999, we can actually abbreviate it and just use the first one. So whenever the second uh, the second digit of these two digits are the same, you can you can abbreviate it. You can put it 999 to kind of shorten that so you don't have to do 99, 99, 99. Just like if you had 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, you would just put 0, 0, 0. It would be kind of almost like using first names in a way. And, and we'll see that when we, uh, when we use that in CSS. So just be aware that we can kind of abbreviate that a little bit. Um, let's just try the other direction, going from hex to RGB. So here's a hex number. You might look at that and say, what, what the heck is AD? Well, if you just know that, that the first digit is the 16s, you can know that A is 10, because in our number scheme, it basically goes up to 9, and then after that is A, which is 10. So if we know that there's 10 16s, that means that there's the first number would be 160, and then the 1s 
would basically be 13 because D happens to be 13. If you keep counting A, B, C, D, that goes up to 13. So there's 13 ones and there's 10 16s, which is 160. So that color would be 173. That would be the equivalent of the RGB 173. Now, if I went into Photoshop just to take a look at this color slider, you know, if I wanted to check that out, I could go here and put in 173 because it was our first one. I'll put in 173 and I'll leave the others at zero. And you can see it, it kind of makes a dark red. And if I wanted to see the equivalent in Photoshop, I could go here and go to Web Color Sliders and I could see that it is AD. So it does the conversion there. So if you have any software that has sliders, I mean, even Word and PowerPoint have sliders, you can figure out what they are. When I look at this, if you kind of zoom in there, you could see that they have little ticks there. There's actually six spaces. And that kind of indicates web safe colors. In the early days of the web, um, since everybody was looking at websites on sometimes older monitors, old PC monitors and things like that that couldn't display a million colors, they used to recommend doing logos and type in web safe colors. And web safe colors meant that they were colors that could display on any monitor even if they only displayed thousands of colors. So what they used to do is take the, these, web, these uh, RGB colors and break them down into six spots. So there was basically six spots on here that would make maybe about 216 uh, there would be 666 and if you put them if you cube that it would come out to 216 so you'd basically have 216 color combinations that you, that were considered web safe that wouldn't dither what would happen is they would dither they'd get little spots on them if they would uh, if they would show up on a monitor that couldn't display the colors but if you keep these sliders on those little ticks and even in Photoshop they still kind of have these on here so what you'll see is you'll see numbers starting from the bottom from 0, 0, 0, 3, 3, the next one would be 6, 6, the next one would be 9, 9, and then the next one would be CC, and the next one would be FF. So you would only see those numbers, those six numbers in various combinations to be web safe. So if you ever saw colors that were that were only with 00, 0 FF, 3, 3, 6, 6, 9, 9, and CC, they were web safe colors and they were recommended to use with logos and type that they wouldn't dither. They wouldn't get little splotchiness um, in them when, when you would see solid colors. So just be aware of that. Now, we don't have to use web safe colors anymore because we don't use that monitors that only display thousands of colors. But the one reason we would use web safe colors is it gives us a limited palette to work with. So, you know, 16.7 million colors is a lot to choose from. But you might have us, you know, kind of like the way we use PMS colors in print. We have specific shades of colors that we might use for something. We might have a specific PMS or a specific web safe color that we might use for our headlines, for our type, for background colors and so on. So you still may use web safe color, color and you'll still see that in programs like Dreamweaver and Flash and even Brackets may show you web safe colors when you go to to click on there and, and use a slider. So that's what web safe color is. You don't have to use it but it's, it's kind of helpful to use it. I'm going to go into W3 Schools and if you want to learn a little bit more about color they have a section right on their home page called Learn Colors. And it has all kinds of, of areas here to go into, but they do have hex here. They talk about RGB and they have some tools like a color picker where you could kind of, you know, click in and find colors if you ever need to. You know, if you didn't know what the color was and it'll tell you all the, you know, the hex. These are all hex colors over here. Um, you're seeing percentages. These are the RGB equivalents. Keep in mind in web when we, we can use RGB in web now. And we could even use it where we have something called alpha, RGBA, we'll, where we can also make it adjust the transparency. So you'll see that, and we'll talk about that more. But even when you use just straight RGB, you have to put it in parentheses after the RGB, 153, 255, 102. That's how RGB is shown in the web, although we can use both. We can use hex and we can use RGB color. There's a converter in here. so. Just for example, if I went in here to this converter and I put 173, that was a color we were looking at, and 00, it should show up as the dark red that we mentioned. Here it shows us our hex, AD, 0000, and it shows some other, other color modes too, like hue, saturation, and lightness that we use sometimes to help mix up colors. But there's a lot of tools in there, so check out the W3 Schools Learn Colors. So that's RGB colors, that's hex colors. You will see these things, but they're basically just RGB colors. Just be aware that, you know, FFs and things on the high end are going to be lighter and things down at the lower end with zeros and lower numbers are going to be darker colors. Just want you to be familiar with hex color and where that came from, you know, as you move on in working with CSS, working with HTML or anything else.